All right, guys, good morning, um, or good afternoon, I suppose it is, uh, on Monday. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, linear expressions and basically how we come up with a linear equation uh, based on a table of values and how we can tell whether or not a, or a relationship is linear uh, based on just the table of values, okay? Sorry, guys, I'm, feeling, I'm still feeling a little bit under the weather, so if I sound really, like, plugged up and... Like I can't really talk, and that's because uh, that's exactly the case. All right, here we go. So I'm looking at this linear relationship here, where I'm comparing mass and cost. So I've got mass here, cost here. Um, and the first question we're asking is, is this relationship linear? The way you can tell that something is linear or not, we've talked about this a few times, is whether the numbers in this column go up by the same amount every time, and if the numbers in this column go up by the same amount every time. The numbers in this column don't have to go up by the same number as the ones in this column. But as long as they both increase at an equal rate every single time, then we do in fact have a linear relationship. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look to see here whether or not we have a linear relationship. So as mass goes up, it goes up by 100 every time. So I'm just going to write a little 100. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing it to show you. All right. And I can't write very well on this thing. So this goes up by 100 every single time. And over on the cost side of things, it goes up by 200 every single time. So every time mass goes up by 100, cost goes up by 200. So no matter what happens, mass always increases by 100, cost always increases by 200, therefore this relationship has to be linear. I'm just going to get rid of that. Well, maybe I can't get rid of that. That's all right. All right, next question now that I've written all over it is what would a what would be a linear relation or equation that represents this relationship? So here we're trying to come up with the algebraic expression of uh, of this relationship that we have here. Um, so I'm going to use uh, m to represent mass and c to represent cost. So if I look here, this is pretty easy in this case because this one goes up by 100 every time. This goes up by 200 every time, which means that this cost is always double my mass. So if I was to come up with my, my linear relationship, I would say C, because C is the uh, dependent variable. It, it's cost, or it, the cost depends on what the mass does. Uh, therefore, it's going to be the one that we have outside the equation. So C equals, and it's always equal to two times whatever M is. So if I know my mass, I can predict my cost because I can just multiply it by 2. So even if I asked what the cost of something that weighed a million grams was, it would cost 2 million grams, and I know that um, based on my formula here. All right? Uh, pretty easy, pretty simple stuff. Let's move on to uh, the next. All right. We're going to look at creating a linear equation for a bit of a harder um, table of values. First thing we want to do is always check to make sure that we actually have a linear equation. So again, we're going to make sure that the, the dependent variable increases by the same amount every time, and that the independent variable also increases by the same amount every time. Alright, so if I look here, I go up by 3, I go up by 3 again, and I go up by 3 again. So the dependent side is good, it goes up by 3 every single time, and here I go up by 1 every single time, so this relationship is linear. It's also important to, uh, to put these little marks on here just to show how much it goes up every time because we need that when we're making our linear equation. All right, so here t is our, in, sorry, our dependent variable, so I'm going to write that one first over here. So we're going to have t equals, and now we have to figure out what t equals. And that's where these numbers here become important. So what this is saying is t is always 3 times h, because every time h goes up by 1, t goes up by 3. So I'm going to start off by writing t equals 3 times h. All right. So it's important to draw these numbers, or at least to know how much they go up every time, because you need that to make your first part of your equation, so it's 3h here. Now we do is we actually multiply 3 times h and see what the difference is between this number and the number we get just by multiplying h by 3. All right. So if I go, and I'm going to do this in blue, if I go 3 times 0, I get 0. All right. Now you're doing that based on this first number. 
So I get 0 here, but the answer in our relationship is negative 2. So that's 2 less than, uh, I'm just going to write that over here. So it's 2 less than what we have. Let's try it with the next number. So 3 times 1, and again, I am just getting this number from here, equals 3. But I didn't get 3 in my table of values. I got 1. So again, that's 2 less. Right? And I could keep going, and I could test all of them, but at this point it's pretty obvious that uh, every single time it's 2 less than 3 times h, so we're also going to add minus 2 to our equation. All right? And now we're just going to double check that that works. So I'm going to pick the last set of numbers, 3 and 7, and I'm just going to double check that my formula uh, actually did work. So I'm just going to get rid of, oh, that didn't go very well. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of these just so we have some room to work. Wow, this is not cooperating. All right, so let's test it with 3 and 7. So we're saying t is 3 times 3 minus 2. 3 times 3 is 9 minus 2, and 9 minus 2 is 7. So here, that worked out. And so my equation here perfectly describes this relationship. All right, so just to reiterate, all you need to do is multiply, or see how much this one increases, see how much this one increases. This one here, the independent variable, will almost always increase by 1. And it would be very rare for me to give you a case where it doesn't, because it gets a lot harder to come up with your, uh, your equation from there. So here it increases by 1, this increases by 3. So because this increases by 3 every time this increases by 1, this must always be 3 times this. So that's what we did here. And then once again, we just we saw that when I do three times zero, I actually get less. My my relationship is uh, has less number than I would expect from just this. So I have to also subtract two. All right. So it's a matter of sort of guessing and checking, and just making sure that you're being correct. So we're going to try one more uh, case. All right. Looking at this last one here, we're going to use the exact same technique that we used before. First thing we want to do is double check that it's a linear relationship. So here. This one's actually going down, and it goes down by 3 every time. And I usually talk about how much the number goes up, um, but Willie asked me last week, um, can a relationship or linear relationship go down as well? And absolutely it can. So here, it's going down by 3 every single time. On this side, it goes up by 1 every single time. As I said, that's usually what I would give you, because I'm more interested in the process than than having a more complicated pattern, all right? So, if this goes down by 3 every time, and this goes up by 1 every time, then y, and again, we always take the dependent variable and put it on one side of the equation, and then the independent variable goes on the other, all right? So y must equal negative 3x, because every time this one changes by 1, this one changes by negative 3. All right. So now we're just going to run some tests to see uh, whether or not this works and whether or not we have to modify it. So we're saying y is negative 3x. So let's take my first pair of numbers here. All right. So if I go y equals negative 3 times negative 1, I get positive 3. All right. But in my equation, we're saying that that's 7. All right, the relationship is 7, and that's the actual number it has to be. So we need to do something to this equation to get it to equal this. All right, uh, and if I look and compare what I got, or what my table value says versus what I got, I'm just going to go 7 minus 3, which is 4. Okay, so there's a difference of 4. The number of my table values is 4 greater than what I get from just this. All right, so I'm going to take quickly uh, check the next set of numbers just to double check. So I say uh, y is negative 3 times 0 in this case. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. Uh, but in my table of values where I have x is 0, y is 4, not 0. So what I'm going to do is just like before, I'm going to go 4, which I took from my table of values, minus what I found from my equation, and I get 4. All right, so every single time, or the two times I've checked, and I'm hoping it lasts every time because 
Otherwise, it wouldn't be a linear relationship. This number is always four greater than this one. So to act, actually predict my answer, or I need to modify my, my equation, and I'm going to say negative 3x plus 4. All right, and I get that 4 from what I found here. Now we're just going to double check that we were right. So we're going to look at, I'm going to pick the last one just to make sure it holds true even at the end of the relationship. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go y equals negative 3 times 4. And I'm just pulling it from this last one. Plus 4. And it helps if I actually use my pen. Plus 4. So negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. Which is exactly what I got in my relationship. So now this equation actually, actually predicts what can happen later on. Alright, so I'll give myself a little check mark there, and I'm good. Uh, there's some textbook questions I'd like you to do around this stuff. There are a lot of them. Uh, I expect you all to be doing them. You will be getting an assignment tomorrow based on this stuff here. And it's not horribly complicated. Uh, finding this can be a little bit tricky, but you just got to double check that it keeps working. And if it's not working, see what the difference is between what you wrote and what the variables say. Alright? Um, hope you're being good for your sub. I hope I feel better tomorrow when you're actually watching this. Have a great day, guys.